right, so we always like to have solar on our rig just because we don't want to run a generator when we're out boondocking, which we do quite a bit. And in this rig, we have a residential fridge, which means it runs only on electricity. So we don't have the propane slash electric fridges that RVs normally have. So we needed to have bigger battery bank to power that big refrigerator overnight and if we have overcast days. So we got a bigger battery bank and then we also got some solar on the roof to recharge those batteries when the sun is out. So let's go check out what they did. All right, there it is. It worked on. Sweet. All right, so we are at Future Solutions. We got our rig back. We got the solar setup inside all done. Uh, it's a preliminary setup because we only had like three days to drop it off and we killed these guys getting it installed in those three days. So we are super thankful that they were able to complete it in our time frame. but we are gonna come back in the winter and leave it for a little bit longer so we can do a fuller setup so we can run a lot more um, inside, including some air conditioning, which is huge. All right, so here is Matt Walkins from Future Solutions. He did the install. He was breaking his back in there when we pulled up, so we're super thankful for no you problem. getting it done. Um, let's look inside here and see what we got and kind of talk about what it can give us inside the RV as far as power and what we can do with it. So. All right, so this is going to be a little tight because it's inside our battery bay and our truck's hooked up right now. But so. We replaced the two standard um, 12 volt lead acid batteries with four Battleborn lithium batteries. So basically we went from essentially two batteries to roughly 10 batteries yeah. of, of lead acid capacity. So when you think about lead acid, um, you need to realize that the amp hour rating on a lead acid battery, you only get half of that at best because at six volts the battery's dead. So with a lithium battery and, and ones like these Battleborns, they're rated for 100 amp hours, you get that full 100 amp hours. So each one of these is roughly two and a half lead acid batteries. So I've got essentially 10 lead acid batteries that weighs 120 pounds total in there. Um, and they'll charge quicker. Uh, they dis dispense the energy a little bit better. Uh, and, and you can actually just, you know, that's a lot less space. In order to do that, you'd need to upgrade a truck because you're talking probably a yeah. thousand pounds 1200 pounds of lead acid to be able to do the same thing so. yeah uh, there's also inside there is a 50 amp victron smart solar uh, solar charger so uh, all its functionality comes through the app there's also a victron 500 amp smart shunt which is back on the corner so the blue thing is the MPPT smart solar controller and you can see that little yellow light it's an absorb because we're putting 600 watts of solar in and our batteries are full so down here in the corner you can't hardly see it but there's a what's called a smart shunt and everything in the coach is grounded through that so that it sees every bit of power coming in and out of this thing as far as 12 volt goes um, there is a 400 amp fuse in the corner and a master disconnect for the upgraded inverter and then the orange thing that you see there is a precision circuits battery guardian and what it does it's kind of like a safety so if the unit gets walked away from or gets put in storage and something gets left on when that thing gets down to 11.6 volts that's going to open up and it's actually going to kill all the 12 volt draw in the unit so and that protects the battery from overdraw yeah and... yeah the batteries have an internal uh battery management system to protect themselves as well but if you it's not good to drain stuff all the way down yeah. and if those get well, as we call them when they get frightened yeah. and they protect themselves yeah. uh they'll drop to two or three volts and yeah. you don't want that to ha right. happen because then the inverter won't see them yeah. and some other stuff can yeah so a little insurance but... policy for yep. a very expensive component as yeah. the lithium batteries yeah. are and, and i recommend one of those anybody that's going to upgrade to lithium uh, be it Battleborn or be it anybody else, I would recommend one of those things as a safety precaution because you guys know as your RVers, you walk away and you forget and a light gets, you know, get children, oh, yeah. and a light gets Definitely. left on in a bedroom or something gets left yeah. on, come back to a dead battery bank, it's a very expensive yeah. battery bank and you don't want to hurt it. So. Right. Yeah. Okay, so we have a ton more capacity as far as battery power is concerned. How do we use that? How do we take that 12 volt battery and turn it into usable power inside the RV? 
Right, so when people talk about solar systems, solar gets all the credit. Uh, solar is kind of the flash, and it's what everybody sees with the panels. Mm -hmm. But it's you need three pieces. So you need solar, you need a battery bank, and then to get the power out of the battery bank for AC, you need an inverter. So in here, this, this unit would have been considered uh, it had a residential reefer, so it had a thousand watt inverter, and then it was solar prepped. So there wasn't any solar on the roof, but that's what allowed me to turn it around so quick is the wiring's up there. So I'm not snaking through the cabinets and everything else. So we were able to put 600 watts of solar on the roof and connect it to a roof port and bring it down in a really short amount of time with really not invading the coach. Right. So what we did was uh, we put in a uh, Magnum Energy. This is a 2000 watt combi unit. So this unit has a charger and an, and is an inverter, and this is a dual out. So we use this on this rig because we had an inverter for the fridge, but we also wanted to invert some other outlets. And in order to do that in the time frame that we had, it was easiest to grab the wiring for the GFI circuit. So now every GFI outlet in this coach is inverted, um, as well as the refrigerator. And it really, I mean, it was not a whole lot of work. You can't really tell that other than that big thing hanging there, you can't really yeah. tell that we did yeah. anything. So um, what it allows you both, there's dual outlets. So there are breakers, it's protected here on the bottom side. Okay. Um, and then that will actually replace the converter that's in the unit. So. I'm not sure what size converter was in there. Um, probably 75 amp or something like that, as big as this unit is. Yeah. And so, a converter will take the AC input from like a campground power pedestal and then charge our batteries, converting it from 120 volt to 12 volt. Yeah, they're ba they're basically converters. That's there's a lot of confusion with converters and inverters mm -hmm. and actual chargers. Yeah. So converters are are basically. Uh, uh, solid state just a uh they're just um they're passing energy through they're, they're converting ac to 12 volt at a constant current and so they don't necessarily do bulk absorb float okay. for a long period of time um the idea is they're a power supply so they run all your lights and do everything and keep all that power regulated and nice and even but if you have a big battery bank it may never actually get fully topped off because the converter is just going to run at that one specific voltage. so that's when you go to an actual inverter charger. So that that takes the power out of the batteries and provides it to the coach. The solar fills up, helps fill up the batteries when you're not plugged into short power. So, and the other cool thing about this converter is that you can program it for lithium batteries, right. which our factory uh, converter charger did not do. Right. So this is set up so we can do um, you can do custom functions. So if you have there's multiple different brands of, of lithium ion batteries out there right now, and a lot of them move around at different voltages. So some people like 14.6, some 14.4, some 14.2. If you just have one charger for all that, it's probably all gonna go to 14.2, so you guys that need to be a little bit higher aren't yeah. ever gonna get topped off. Right. So we can program that specifically to the voltages that we want and make it act with what fits your lifestyle and how you use it. Some people are, as we call them, plug runners, yeah. where they just go from plug to plug to plug to yeah. plug, and they don't necessarily need a whole lot of different battery or, or any of that stuff. Whereas you may find that you're gonna spend a week out in Arizona, so it's gonna be hot out, you're gonna be using the unit a lot, you need a little bit more charge, we can program that in that way. So. Okay, cool. Yeah. All right, and then the last component are a couple panels that are up on the roof, and we put Two, yeah, so there's two 300 watt panels up there. They operate at between 30 and 40 volts. So the reason we do that versus the typical 20 volt panel, as you would call it, uh, is because we're using an MPPT charger. So that allows me to run a smaller gauge wiring, have less voltage loss, um, and be a little bit more efficient with what we're doing. So you, if you look at like a house system, they may run at 600 volts. But we don't do that in RV as you don't really want some right. random line inside your coach yep. at 600 volts. Yeah, so, yeah, so we try to keep them down below 60. Uh, that is an RVIA thing right okay. now. So with using those at 30 volts, they're paralleled into the same docking port. So there's only 16 amps of power uh, of current running through the coach, um, but it's running through it. 30 some odd 35 volts okay. so yeah. we're able to convert that and, and that's the one thing about an mppt charger is it's really a dc to dc converter it allows that higher voltage to get bucked out or bucked down to yeah. a, a lower voltage yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cool. but that, it should when we pulled it outside you know we were the fridge was running inside and it, some other stuff was on and uh we were 
220 watts negative is what we were using out of the battery bank. We rolled it outside and we're 350 to the good. So, yep. you know, we're putting in 500 and 15, 520 watts yes, right now, yeah. which is which is good for especially for Indiana. So. Yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. So now inside the coach, now what we can do is the big thing we wanted was to run run the residential fridge without any issues, and I think that's totally fine, taken care of. Um, we also, like Matt said, tapped into the GFI circuit. So now all, any outlet that is run on that GFCI circuit throughout the coach is also powered when we're inverting power. So we can plug in just like we're plugged into, you know, any shore power at a uh, campground and use that. So whether we're charging up our, our computers, tablets or whatever, also running, you know, small appliances that, you know, the inverter can handle. So right. that's very convenient. And that's something that we didn't have in our other setup because we ran extension cords to our inverter. So and I get asked a lot of questions about, well, why would I want to, you know, generate, I can go with the generator and gasoline's cheap and some other stuff. Well, right now you get up in the morning, you want to cook a pot of coffee or something like that you don't have to start the generator you yeah. can do that off that circuit right. or if you got you're going to take a shower and you're going to run a hair dryer yeah. you can do that without having to start a generator or do some other thing so that's that's the kind of freedom that comes with it is generators get more and more kind of get shunned more and more yeah, and totally. have to go away yeah that's that's the nice part about it yeah stuff, so. yeah and we spend a lot of time on blm land or at national park campgrounds where you can run a generator but typically you don't want to come to this beautiful uh, natural scene and fire up a gas generator that's bugging your neighbors that are, you know, a quarter mile away. Um, so the solar is completely silent. It's free energy, so it's amazing. So we like to use that route instead of a generator. So. All right, so thanks to Matt. You really put in a lot of time and effort and we do appreciate it big time. Um, we will be back in the winter to upgrade this setup to more of the Sol Super Solar Flex package yep. that Keystone is offering on um, some Montana's on the Montana. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, when when you guys come back in the winter, so what we'll do is we'll replace the 2,000 watt inverter. The wiring's all run to support a 3,000 watt hybrid inverter. So we'll swap that out for a 3,000. And then at that point in time, we can actually invert the whole coach. There's no, with a 2,000 watt inverter, if you start the microwave or try to yeah. run an air conditioner at the same time off that, that's too much. With a hybrid inverter, um, with some soft starts on the ACs, which is what basically what Keystone's doing with the Super Solar Flex, they have two, uh, they have 510 amp hours, which is a little bit more than that, but what you have um, with a hybrid inverter running through an energy management system and the whole coach is powered. So that's what we'll do with this. Okay. Yeah. When we come back in the fall or yeah. in the winter. So yeah, yep. that'll be great. So we will show more of that when we get to it. But for now, we're going to go enjoy this. We're going to take it out west and enjoy some Montana country. Take the high country out to Montana high country. So thanks again to Matt. And um, yeah, stay tuned for the upgrade coming this winter. But for now, we're going to enjoy this setup. So thanks for watching.